in the shop and we know how to live it up because we're going to work on horizontal and vertical stabilizers and the elevator. What a great time, right? So we're going to show you close-ups here again to give you a chance to see how it's laid out on the board. A couple cool structural things that I figured out and now we'll take a look at it and we'll dive right in, okay? Okay guys, you can see we've got all our parts laid out first. Make sure everything's here before we start dropping glue. And one of the things that you'll find is that these uh, parts right here, which basically uh, encapsulate all these parts right here, are going to be first butt jointed right there. So we'll glue those together, lay one down, and then build everything on top, and then lay the top part over it. Now. One of the things I'm going to do is once we get this one part laid down over the plans, we're not going to be able to see any of these numbers here. So what I'm going to do is just take a photograph of it and refer to it as uh, as we build so that I don't forget uh, where these things go again because the plans are going to be covered. So the rudder is actually pretty cool, what they did here structurally. When you first take it out of the box, it has all these cutouts in place all the way down. And then they pop out, right? So you think that we're, what they're doing is cutting this out as like the circles to save weight. So then they have these parts here that are T19, T18, T17 that you're supposed to then put back in. And I'm thinking, why would we cut them out just to put them back in? Well, it makes a lot of sense when you look at the grain structure. So this grain all runs this way. So if we just maintain this piece in here, then the grain continues all in one direction, making this rudder susceptible to cracking in this direction. So it could crack and split along there, along the grain that is. So these are opposite grained, right? So now you got this grain running this way, this grain running this way. So this thing is not going to crack. It adds stability all along the way. So now you've got that grain structure cross-hatching with this grain structure, which without adding weight, because you're removing this weight but adding that, so your, your net gain is zero, you've added that structural strength without adding weight. So that was pretty pretty smart. I, I thought that was a pretty cool thing. Learn something on that. You can see now I have the horizontal stabilizer all built up and consisting of one sheet of plot, uh, balsa underneath and then all the other pieces put into place. We'll then cover it with that right there and glue that down so it will form you know, the one piece. Then we'll go ahead and work on the elevator right here. Okay guys, I have glued in the cross grain pieces in the rudder. So that's all set to go. And for the horizontal stabilizer and the, the elevator, I uh, sandwiched those together and the top piece we put down with alphabetic resin rather than CA because it was an enclosed piece and we wanted to make sure it's, it dried flat and true. So I wanted to make sure I had time to get everything situated and weighted down. So I've used my sandbags here to weigh down a large flat piece of wood. And we've also got some of our 321 blocks right here. So we'll put those away. I'm getting to the point where I'm going to stop for a little while and clean my shop because I cannot stand it when it starts getting chaotic. And about this point in any build, things start getting chaotic. And I don't like that. So after I get this uncovered and make sure everything's the way I like it, I'm going to uh, take a few minutes to clean things up and get my shop clean up again because a messy shop is hard for me. Some guys thrive on it. But uh, I'm not I'm not keen on it. All right, so here is coming right off the board our horizontal stabilizer. So you can see it's dead nuts on, nice and flat and straight. Looks good. So it looks like I had a little bit of glue seep out and glue my 
flat board here to my uh, elevator. So I'm just going to use my 3D printing spatula here and just kind of pop it off here. Should be in good shape. I should have put some, uh, I should have put down a little bit of wax paper there, but that looks, that's fine. And it's off of there. And that gives me a nice true elevator too. Nice and flat, I like that. Looks good. All right, so let me just get this board out of the way here. And so now we've got our horizontal stabilizer and our elevator. Looking good. So there's a little piece of fiberglass that goes right in here. I'm not convinced that this is going to be the most rigid, but, well, you see it's pretty darn rigid. Looks pretty good. All right, and then so we'll have our rudder that actually goes underneath. Not on top, it'll go underneath on this plane. All right, so there's our control surfaces for the tail. And I think we'll go on to floats. After I clean up this mess. Okay, guys, we're ready to start on the floats now. And it's a pretty simple system they've got here. You basically have got a plywood interior structure that's taking all of the stress from the struts from the airplane and the wing and surrounding with balsa. And I'll show you some close-ups of what I've got here. Okay, as you can see, you've got a balsa side that you're going to start your building with your plywood formers. And then this other piece of balsa will go on the other side once you've got all your formers in place. So all plywood. I've already pre-laminated these components right here. And they'll actually go in between here and in between here. And your struts will from your... Uh, wing and from your uh, pl uh, fuse will come right in here each of these parts right here now these two pieces right here are going to be what your floats connect to down on the bottom now their indications are they want a wood screw in there but as we've talked about before because i want to be able to take this plane apart and put it back together and apart and transport it i don't want wood screws here because it's just going to ultimately, uh, I think, be a problem later on. As, as you put them in, put them out, they're just going to, it's going to be a problem, I think. So we're going to pre-drill these and put some 440 uh, blind nuts in there so that it's uh, easily to take apart. Other than that, everything else should be the same. So we'll go ahead and start putting some glue down. You can see I've got all my magnetic 90s here, so I've got a perfectly straight and true piece of work here okay so we'll set it down and we'll begin putting some glue down we'll come back when i have uh, all these pieces in place you can see where we're going with it really pretty simple uh, components pretty simple structure here guys okay you can see i've got my laminated pieces set within the formers okay now i'm going to be putting this on top here but what I need to do remember we're going to pre-drill these before we get everything sealed up and glued in but we need to make sure we're putting those pre-drilled holes in the right spot you can see I've already gone through the process of marking well I'm going to show you real quick how I went about doing that okay so hang on so I want to show you how I went about pre-marking these here so first what I did was I went ahead and seated this side here. And just take a moment. Everything lines up pretty darn good. But you got to get it all, all the tabs lined up. So we're going to line up each tab. Get it in place. Okay, there's that one, there's that one. And one more at the front. Boom. All right, so I've got all of the tabs on the side in place. I'm not going to glue them, obviously. All right, so now these are going to then fit here, but we wanted to make sure we don't know exactly how far that'll slide down there. 
So what we're going to do is go ahead and put this piece just dry fit in place here. Oops, get to the right. There's a right and left on this side, so I'm sure you got the right side here. So you can see, you get this in place here. You don't have to have it exact, just to kind of get it pretty close there. Okay, so we know now that's the space we have to work with here. That's the space we have to work with. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and slide that in like that. And then we'll pre-mark that. So you see how we pre-mark that? And we'll do it in both places. Need three hands. Okay, cool. So now you can see we've got the pre-marked spot there. So now we'll take those pieces out pop in the drill press and drill press and go ahead and drill out a, a pre-drill hole for the 440 blind nut. Remember there is a right hand side and a left hand side on this float. So on the next float we're going to have to make sure that those tabs openings are on the other side of the float. Got to make sure otherwise you're going to have two of one side and then you're you're in trouble. So I don't want to talk down to you guys, but um, for some of you don't know how to set a blind nut, just, you know, if you know how to do it, then just ignore this part. Some folks don't know how to set a blind nut. So you don't want to, you don't want to uh, draw this in straight into the wood. You want to put a washer, or in this case, I've got the strut in place there so that that metal is blocking that head from diving into the plywood because you don't want that pulling in this way, you want it all pulling in this way. So basically you're going to draw that into the pre-drilled hole. You can see I've got it kind of loose yet, so once it gets a little bit firm and those teeth start grabbing. Alright, so now it's kind of finger snug. And then this is a hex head on this one, so we're just going to go ahead and draw that. Oops. Go ahead and draw that line nut into the wood. See it's drawn in the teeth into the wood. I'm going to draw it right in there so it's good and snug. And again you got to have a washer on this side here so that that head doesn't get driven into this side. You want that, you don't want that head driven in but you want those teeth driven into the wood on that side. Once you got it tight in there, you just back it off. I'm going to use a shorter nut or a bolt here. I just happen to have these 440s handy. We'll end up using a shorter one in the final analysis. Just spin this out. Okay, now you've got your blind nut seated. Now we're going to go back later, or before we actually put it in there, or glue it in rather, and we're going to put some uh, epoxy on the edges of this. Careful not to get them into the threads, but we want to make sure that that doesn't work its way out. So we're going to epoxy just around the edges here, so that that is fixed to that wood. Okay, I have put on the top section here. So we had the two sides and all of the formers and the superstructure inside there, the ply. And then we just then laid in this top section right here. It did have to do a little bit of opening up holes on these these uh, wide pieces right here. Like a 64th of an inch. It wasn't much, but um, I did have to open them up a little bit. Other than that, everything fit together really nicely and then what I did so everything fit real snugly so again that super thin CA um, allows you to get in here then and just glue all of the edges and it's that thin CA really soaks into that balsa and really gives you a dynamite uh, seal there so this is rock solid next we'll be laying on the bottom part here 
Uh, it'll break it down into two pieces, the front part, and then you've got your float step here, and then the back part. We are going to then fiberglass these with fiberglass cloth. A couple, they say you can do it a couple different ways. You can either just uh, kind of putty your uh, any divots and stuff, and then put a covering on it. Because this is mostly balsa, I think it's going to need that extra strength that a, um, a fiberglass cloth will give us. So once we get the bottom part on and get our front nose here and all shaped, uh, we will go ahead and do a fiberglass on it. Okay? That's pretty good. Man, it's light. Wow. Alright, so we've completed the construction on one of the floats here. We still have to do some sanding and uh, they're giving you enough kind of extra overlay on everything so you can sand it all flush and everything. Now I think it's kind of cool that there's kind of a curve to this back part of the float behind the step. It's kind of curved. I think it's going to act as a little bit of a rudder. Uh, when it kind of tips in, it kind of gives you a little bit of a rudder action there. Um, but remember, there is no true rudder on these floats. So when you go to do your sanding and everything, you want to maintain sharp edges along here because that's going to give you some you know t stability and t so it's not so it can track straight in the water so nice sharp edges down here um, you have to sand it flush with the sides but you want a nice sharp edge and we're gonna i'm gonna wait till i get both of the floats ready um, before i sand the shape of the nose those are made up with a sandwiching seven of these um, kind of half circle balsas and you create a, um, a sandwich and then you glue that to the front and then we'll shape it later. But I want to match them, so I'm going to sand them at the same time. So that's the one float. Still needs the sanding and everything, but uh, we'll sand each. Once I get them both built, then I'll do the sanding so I can make sure everything is consistent with shaping and everything, okay? So this thing is incredibly light. And uh, because it's mostly balsa, it kind of reinforces the fact that I want to go with a fiberglass cloth over this before we uh, before we end up painting it. Okay, looking good. We're going to go ahead and build the second float. I should point out that um, the bottom here are just balsa. One is pre-shaped, and one is just you know a rectangle goes into the front of the step, and then this one goes in the back here. All parts fit nicely though. Now remember, when you're building your floats, you have to build a right-hand side and a left-hand side, which means you have to make sure that these tabs right here are going to be on the inside of each float, which means one is reversed from the other one. So before we started with L7-1 down on the board, now we have to start out with L7 so that it'll reverse the positioning of these. All right. So just make sure you're doing that and you don't end up building with two of one side because you're, it won't work then, all right? So just be very careful that you're, you know, you're thinking that through before you start uh, building the second float. Both floats are now fully constructed. It's going to still be a bit of work doing the shaping and sanding for the front and also the rear of the floats. You can see it's just a balsa plug on the end right now, so that have to be shaped to get a nice even line all the way down. You see we made sure to build for right and left. You got to make sure you plan ahead on that, otherwise you're going to end up with two from the same side. Okay, and we'll go ahead and spend a few minutes sanding and shaping on these, and then we'll be able to show you what the final sanded piece looks like. Okay guys, everything is all sanded to shape. You can see we got a nice tape around the front there. And they're matching, of course. And you can see we've got the connecting rods. They're not fixed, they're just kind of set there for just to see how it looks right now. It's shaped in the back. Everything looks good. All sanded down to 400 grit. So it's ready to fiberglass. So I'm going to do that next. My only thing I'm trying to figure out right now is how I'm going to fiberglass and maintain that 
uh, inset for this to go over. I think what I'm going to end up doing is modeling clay, form that in there, glass over it, and then cut it out so that modeling clay uh, will kind of keep that inset the way we want it. And then what we'll do is brush in some super thin uh, epoxy in there just to waterproof it. Then when the bolt is going in, it will uh, first we'll just drip some wax into it and then we'll thread in our 440 bolt through the wax and that'll water seal that actual threads. Ready for fiberglass. Okay, I've glassed the bottom of both floats. Now I'm ready to work on the sides of floats because remember you're going to go top or bottom sides top in your um, process, okay? So we're going to go ahead and do the side that has the connecting slot. So these go right here and the bars go across. And we want to maintain that inset piece. So what I've done is I've taken some putty. Um, and I'm not talking about filler putty because it's porous and it'll absorb the resin. So what we've done is you could take some uh, kind of molding clay if you wanted to, molding putty. But I didn't have any and I wasn't going to spend $13 on Amazon for these four little spots here. So those there's the sticky stuff that you put on the back of posters or pictures and stuff to stick on the wall in a dorm room. And I literally had just enough to fill these slots in here. Um, so they're filled in and we're going to glass the side over it and we'll leave it in there. And then we'll glass the other side and then we'll glass the top. And then I'm going to cut this section out and that'll leave that slot there. And then I can just gently brush in some uh, resin inside there so that it maintains its um, groove and inset uh, dimensions. And also it's got that blind nut in there as well. We'll fill that with wax first to make sure that none of the resin gets down inside the threads because that would kill us. All right, so resin or uh, fiberglassing is not necessarily my favorite thing because it always seems like you're under the gun time-wise, even if you're using 30-minute uh, resin. It just never seems to have enough time. So uh, we'll tackle the sides now, and we should be in good shape. Okay, we're going to wrap up this segment here um, where we built the control surfaces and the floats and you can see we've finished fiberglassing the floats they're all nice and smooth we were able to uh, go ahead and cut these uh, inserts out because we remember we put that putty in there to um, keep those open so that this will slide nicely in there okay and that's the connectors between floats all right so now Fiberglassing <clears throat> takes a fair amount of time. So I took the time while, because you're going to do the bottom, so I did both bottoms, and you got to wait three hours minimum for that bottom to cure. Three hours, three hours, three hours, you know, so it takes a fair amount of time just to fiberglass these floats. So I took that time to go ahead and do my sanding on all my control surfaces as well as getting my sanding done on my wings. So now all my leading edges are nicely sanded. It, these are basically ready to cover now. Um, they really sanded up nicely. Just be careful if you're sanding the, uh, on the ribs because they can be relatively delicate. If you start going cross rib, then you might catch one and break it. So just be careful. Um, but it's all sanded and ready to go. So covering will be next on the wings, and I have also, in the interim, got all my servos all set. So they'll sit right in here. Okay, servos come with a kit, so they're all set to go. And we'll, and we'll, cut, we'll make our own wires to go through, because you'll need a servo extension from get here um, all the way out to the end. So we make our own servo extensions, okay? So use your time while you're waiting these to draw or to cure and go ahead and get your wings all sanded and get ready to do the covering. Um, the main construction doesn't take anywhere near as much time as the finishing construction. So, you know, use your time wisely so you can get to get in the air as fast as you can. Okay. 
So the next segment we're going to cover is going to be some modifications I'm going to make to the fuselage. But for now, this is the end of this episode. Keep on building, guys.